Okay, uh, I try to, to give you an, uh, an overview on Legionella regulations and the impact in Germany. And I'd like also to mention uh, the sentence of uh, Churchill, you must look on the facts because they look at you. And you have uh, put a lot of questions. I try to answer now these questions which you know and uh, just some uh, remarks on Legionellos uh, in Germany. In 2016, we had 992 notified Legionellosis at the Robert Koch Institute in Berlin. It's our National Public Health Department. And 69, 96% uh, of them were hospitalized. We have a fatality rate from the notified cases of 4.7%. We had uh, certain outbreaks. The biggest outbreak was in um, uh, 2013 in Warstein with 159 cases. I was engaged also in the outbreak management. But according to the competence network of community acquired pneumonia, it's a big research project done uh, a lot of years. It is estimated in Germany that we have in Germany between 15 to 30 southern cases of legionellosis occurring each year, and it's increasing. It's, uh, we think it has something to do with the uh, uh, morbidity of older population now in, in Germany and other countries. This means that the numbers of notified cases are a significant underestimation of the true rate of legionellosis in Germany. The CutNets uh, research was a uh, very big uh, research project supported by our Ministry of, of Health and Ministry of Research. Now, just this um, slide, uh, when you look on the mortality from selected diseases that can be transmitted by water in the United States, it's very interesting to see that in this study, we have more that's water transmitted by uh, water associated uh, pathogens uh, which are uh, coming from aquatic microorganisms like Pseudomonas, uh, Anti-M and Legionella, uh, non-tuberculosis mycobacteria uh, that grow in water system biofilms. Now the impact of infectious diseases in, uh, on population health in Europe is uh, researched by this uh, article which was published uh, some weeks ago by the ECDC and they were dealing on the impact of infectious diseases on population health using incidence-based disability adjusted life years results from the burden of communicable diseases in Europe. And the next slide uh, shows you that they divided um, um, so uh, infections with a low population burden and a high individual burden like rabies and diphtheria, uh, those infectious diseases with a low population burden and low individual burden like mumps, uh, cryptosporidia or giardiasis. And on the other side, um, uh, infections with high population burden but low individual burden like influenza uh, and then infectious diseases with high population burden and high individual uh, burden. And there are HIV, tuberculosis, um, invasive uh, uh, pneumonia, and Legionnaire's disease. And this means from a, uh, from a public health impact, uh, we have a high population burden and high individual burden by Legionellosis. Legionellosis is seen in Europe as an important public health risk and judged resulting exclusively, uh, exclusively transmitted from the environment as a preventable disease. And therefore, there is a strong public health reason to regulate this risk to change the situation and achieve better public health protection. When we try to assess the risk, we must, uh, we have, um, also modified from Duncan and Adbert, uh, which uh, uh, the risk of an infection is determined by the concentration of pathogens, by their virulence, by the antibiotic resistance, by tenacity. In Legionella, 
also environmental um, factors like inversion, um, climate uh, um, factors uh, modulate also the risk. And on the other side, uh, the infection uh, predisposition of the host. And therefore, uh, we must take into account, and what I personally have learned, that it is, as I said it also in the con uh, conference in Rome last year, it's a long way to Tipperary. Um, we have the Phil Philadelphia Legionellosis outbreak in 1976, and from the detection of risk to risk regulation, it took up, to my experience, 20 to 30 years. Now, what is in the German regulation? In Germany, we have some specifics which uh, I have to mention. We have the precautionary principle. It is codified in the Protection Against Infection Act. We have the concentration principle that uh, means water must be free from any microorganism which constitute a potential danger to human health. We have a minimizing principle for disinfectants like chlorine um, that we have not to use if it's not necessary dis chemical disinfectants. And we have a principle of risk transparency as obligation to inform responsible authorities and consumers in case of deviation from uh, regulation. Now, in the case of water supplied from a distribution work, uh, we have to fulfill not only um, uh, the risk regulation at the water meter, but in the European regulation and in Germany, we must fulfill this regulation also at the water tap and shower head. Now, uh, the systematic regulation begins uh, or began in 1987 by our public health, uh, federal public health department. And they said in this publication, Legionella cere are a part of the aquatic flora. Eradication in water systems seems unrealistic, but a drastic reduction in technical systems is necessary to reduce infection risks. It is the ALARA principle as low as reasonably achievable. And this is the uh, um, discussion between quantitative microbial risk assessment versus ALARA as low as reasonably achievable. Now, we made in 1987, we made um, a, a, a roadmap where we put the discussed, in, in this year, the discussed infection reservoirs, um, plumbing systems in buildings, um, hot water pools, cooling towers, and also nat natural um, 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 cooling towers. And uh, we have now seen there is another uh, very important uh, reservoir. It is wastewater plants. I will mention it in detail. Now, the regulations are based on acts. The water for human consum consumption is based on the Federal Protection Against Infection Act. Also, swimming pool and bathing water are based on the Protection Against Infection Act. Water for cooling and other aerosol producing technical systems are based on the Federal German Emission Control Act. And uh, for wastewater treatment plants, we have also uh, a paragraph in the uh, Federal Protection Against Infection Act. And the legal basis um, is for regulation for water for human consumption is on the one side, as I mentioned, the Protection Against Infection Act, then the EU Drinking Water Directive from 1998 on the quality for human consumption. Then we have an own ordinance on the quality of water intended for human consumption. And we have proposal of the German Federal Environmental Protection Agency. And in the Protection Against Infection Act, it is mentioned in one paragraph, water for human use must be of such quality that there is no reason to fear any damage to human health, particularly through pathogens being involved in, the, uh, in its consumption or use. It means this is the precautionary principle which we have uh, based on a legal, uh, in a legal um, uh, basis. Um, and then we, uh, we have also um, 
in this paragraph also regulated swimming pools and bathing pools. No reason to fear any damage to human health. And um, this is uh, based on a, a whole holistic uh, overview from water catchment to water taps. It means as uh, the conference named in Atlanta in 1916 from watershed to showerhead. It is based also in the Infection Protection Act. In the Council Directive of the EU from 1989, it's mentioned that um, uh, water for, intended for human consumption shall be wholesome and clean if it is free from any microorganism and parasites from any, and from any substance in numbers or concentrations constitute a potential danger to human health. It means we have an obligation to, uh, that we should say, what is the concentration which could be a potential danger to human health? It is uh, regulated in the Council Directive of the EU. And um, then it is uh, mentioned that in case of water supplied from a distribution network, it must be fulfilled these rules within premises or an establishment at which it emerges from the taps that are normally used for human uh, for consumption. This is also mentioned in the German drinking water ordinance. Um, um, I will not go in detail. And then we have also um, technical uh, standards which were done by the German Technical and Scientific Association for Gas and Water and the um, Association of German Engineers and there we have codes of practices uh, the WW 551 a very important technical rule which was uh, first published in 1993 and then in 2004 which is also translated in English. You can use it also in, uh, you read it in English. It is called Drinking Water Heating and Drinking Water Piping Systems, Technical Measures to Reduce Legionella Growth, Design, Construction, Operation, and Rehabilitation of Drinking Water Installations. Then we have a rule, uh, Technical Rule 556, uh, which is called Hygienic Microbial Irregularities in drinking water installation, what is to be done? A second uh, uh, further rule, what is, uh, how can I clean and disinfect, if it's necessary, plumbing systems? And then the uh, rules from the Association of German Engineers, Hygiene in Drinking Water Supply System Asset Analysis. Now, for cooling towers, we have since 2017, the German Federal Emission Control Act, and uh, we have also a guidance, a technical guidance uh, to, uh, for seven uh, for open recooler systems, secure, hygienically sound operation of evaporative cooling systems. You see here again, these two technical rules are based also on um, uh, control acts, acts which give the legal basis for all of them. And then we have also um, uh, an, an act in the Protection Against Infection Act concerning sewage. And uh, there is, it's mentioned, those of leach to dispose of sewage are of leach that sewage is disposed of in a way that does not give rise to any assets to human health due to pathogens. It was a long time before uh, published and people were thinking of uh, Vibrio cholera and uh, Shigella and uh, things like that. But today we see, because we have the biggest outbreak in, in, uh, to, uh, of, of Legionella in 2013, and there we could show that in this outbreak, by a sewage plant, which took the uh, sewage also from a brewery, uh, the river, uh, where Vista was contaminated with very high concentrations of Legionella, which were uh, increasing also in the sewage plant. And we could show that uh, in a brewery, they had also um, uh, aeration ponds to diminish the uh, concentrations of 
uh, nitrogen and things like that. And this um, big uh, uh, aeration pond had has had temperatures of um, um, uh, 30, 38 degrees Celsius. We found therein up to 100 million Legionella, including uh, the um, infectious um, uh, Legionella, um, and uh, the strain was responsible. And this sewage was brought to the um, 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 wastewater treatment plant of the community and from this point the river was contaminated on a distance of up to 12 kilometers with concentrations of between 20,000 Legionella per 100 milliliter and uh, at 12 km kilometers below they found up to 12,000 uh, Legionella per milliliter and industries were taking just the river water without any treatment to use it also for cooling towns. And therefore I would be very interested to see what's happening in Flint if they have also had very high concentrations of um, Legionella in the river Flint. And therefore in only one German federal um, state, uh, it's in North Rhine-Westphalia, we have a decree sewage treatment systems must be monitored for Legionella by cultural methods and in irrigation ponds of breweries, paper mills and sugar industries we found very high concentrations of Legionella <coughs> up to uh, 10 to the 8 colony forming units per 100 uh, milliliter. Here you see uh, the details on it. I, I will uh, spare a little bit more time for, for it. What water systems building types there are applicable to everything cooling, everything cooling towers, water supplies, ETC. Uh, for water systems, building times, water for human consumptions, every public and private big building must be monitored when they have hot water storage volume for more uh, than 400 liter or more of three liter hot water volume between heater and the last tap at the end of pipe, they must be monitored. And uh, the cooling towers, every open recooler system and natural drawed cooling tower must also be monitored. And therefore you have now uh, an overview on the slide, on the first slide, which I give. We have regulations for buildings and the piping system, including for hospitals, hotels, all the big buildings. We have a technical rule for whirlpools we have technical rules and now acts for cooling towers. And now we have also in, um, for natural cooling towers. And um, now one state in Germany has now also for wastewater treatment a regulation. What organisms are addressed? Mainly Legionella. Environmental monitoring of Legionella is re regulated by ordinances. The concentrations must be below 100 CFU, Legionella species, not Legionella pneumophila, per 100 milliliter. I prefer to have Legionella pneumophila. And um, the environmental monitoring of Pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, is regulated in hospitals by uh, the hospital ordinance. And there we say uh, lower than one CFU Pseudomonas aeruginosa per 100 milliliter. Non-tuberculosis mycobacteria are for the moment not regulated, but we have now the out, uh, an outbreak, a worldwide outbreak for heater cooler in cardiac surgery by non-tuberculosis mycobacteria, and therefore in hospitals, they have to look for those. Do they recommend required environmental monitoring? Yes. If so, by what methods? We have only cultural methods. It's the ISO, 11731 2017, which is prescribed in Germany. And um, I go through it. I have mentioned, you see here the German drinking water ordinance. You see here Legionella species. And the, we have a so called technical uh, uh, action level, Technischer Maßnahme Wert. What, uh, and uh, I will just say, where we have to sample 
in a building. We have to sample for Legionella in the central parts, um, water coming back to the boiler and uh, water going to the building and then in the peripheral uh, area. Uh, and we are looking not showers, but we are looking for taps at, water, at sinks. Then there we have to take uh, samples. Does the regulation specify levels of Legionella above, above which certain actions should be taken? Uh, and who has to be informed when the results came back above the thresholds? We have the so-called technical action value, and this is the value that, when exceeded, gives reason to fear an avoidable health hazard related to the drinking water installation and leads to measures to check the sanitary and technical condition of the drinking water installation being taken in the form of a risk analysis. And this is, comes from the uh, precautionary principle. We know that a well-maintained plumbing system in a water installation system can have um, um, concentrations lower than 100 CFU of Legionella species per 100 milliliter. And now what's the explanatory statement for the technical value? Concerning the parameter Legionella species, no science-based threshold value can be fixed below by which any human health risk can be excluded with reasonable certainty. Therefore, a technical measure is implemented also in the Infection Prevention Act. And in case of reaching this technical measure value, a human health risk cannot be excluded with a standing. The formulation reaching or exceeding the technical measure value serves for technical clarification and legal security for public health departments, but also for owners of these systems. And the technical val measure value is an appearing derived value, which in case of fulfilling the approved technical rules and best care and attention by the owner of the plumbing system will not be reached or not exceeded. Now, we have a lot of uh, technical rules. I just go uh, quick, uh, quickly through them. You see, uh, we have the code of practice, the uh, WH uh, 551, which I mentioned. It's also written in English. You have their um, chapters on planning and construction, operation, maintenance and inspection, rehabilitation, and the hygienic microbial examination and assessment. And uh, the main rules are keep the stored volume of hot water small, keep the hot water hot, the cold water cold, uh, keep the non-circulating parts of the pipeline short, and avoid stagnation, uh, have maintenance and inspection, and have rehabilitation. And then we have as I mentioned, hygienic microbiological uh, monitoring and assessment. And uh, we have uh, an orientation examination and a more detailed examination. But you see here again, the sampling points which are, which are mentioned. And um, then we have um, the assessment, what have you to do if you have a Legionella in your system and it's um, it's important that it means if you have a systemic contamination. It means also in the central part. If the concentrations are below 100, um, then you have nothing to do and you should uh, re-monitor after one year and then uh, without in hospitals after three years if there are no significant alterations. In hospitals, you must look even each year for the Legionella contamination. And if you have very high concentrations in the systemic parts, then it means it is an extremely high contamination and you have something to do immediately and you have a follow-up examination one week after disinfection. And there are also the same rules for the more detailed examination. Then we have this technical rule also translated in English what is to do if you have higher concentration, if you have pseudomonas, if you have uh, Legionella, if you have coliforms or other pathogens or indicators in your system, what can you do? You see here are uh, the algorithms, uh, what you can do. And um, 
I don't uh, go now into the detail. Perhaps you can look for the, uh, for the slides in detail and I can answer also the questions. Um, then I go through it because I let it there, but all these technical rules are translated also in English. <coughs> now we have also a guideline for plumbing systems by the uh, by our engineers. It's the guideline 6023, which is also always translated in English. And um, there are rules for requirements for planning, construction, operation, and maintenance, completion and expansion of the uh, W uh, we 551 in technical terms, implementation of qualification and training of the operational staff. They must be trained. There are rules, rules also for formation, and therefore we want that in Germany every owner has a special responsible person which is trained uh, also what he has to do um, for the plumbing, for his plumbing system. And you see uh, there are details on health expert prom problematic areas, measurements, procedures, and things like that. And then we have also uh, uh, technical guidelines for cooling towers. It's the cooling tower code of practice. Also, this is um, translated in English. You see here the contents. And um, in the same way, we have, uh, excuse me, we have actions which have to be taken when you have an exceeding of the technical value. You see here, uh, if you have uh, concentrations between 100 up to 1,000 per 100 milliliter, not milliliter, repeated examination if concentration is confirmed before microbiome examination at monthly intervals, and they have also do a risk analysis. How is it similar to different than other regulations? Uh, the European technical guidelines from the ECDC has um, similar um, action levels. And uh, who has to comply with it? No one, certain hospitals, federal buildings, a whole country, in Germany, a whole country. Not only specified uh, buildings which have a uh, uh, population with a higher risk. Is a management plan required for those to, that have to comply? Yes, a management plan is uh, required for drinking water installation system and for cooling towers. And we have also their technical rules. If so, how are these plans prepared and kept up to date? We have an obligation based on, based on acts and ordinances and technical rules. And uh, it must be prepared by the owner or entrepreneur or responsible person of the system in a dynamic way, taking into, uh, in, into account also new regulations. Is it difficult to get compliance? In case of exceeding, uh, this is a must. They have to look. And therefore, we have no discussion because it is regulated. They must because they can be punished, especially if there are uh, infections, diseases, or if there are uh, death. We are uh, now in a transition phase, um, but we have a widespread um, um, regulation implementation. We have the implementation for environmental monitoring everywhere and drinking water installation systems. Now since 2017, also in industrial cooling towers, and until now, there, um, now here and there in small cooling towns, we have problems, but now they are obliged to notify their cooling town. And in North Rhine-Westphalia, we have now since uh, two years um, experience with sewage monitor. Um, since, um, oh, excuse me, uh, how enforceable is it? It is very enforceable, uh, these rules, because it's re regulated. Uh, what has been the outcome if you in this guidance policy regulation? Have the regulations been in place long enough to have a demonstrable effect? We are in a trans transition phase, and uh, we see that uh, we have a reduction 
of, um, of the um, technical action value and um, did the regulation lower the number of positive hits from environmental samples? Yes. If so, how much? In the 19s, we had about 70% of all large buildings were systematically contaminated with Legionella. And after the establishment of the technical rules, today we have only about 10% of buildings who have an, a, systematic, a systematically contaminated plumbing system. And have the regulations had an impact on the number of clinical cases? Until today, no reduction of the notified cases. We have even an increase, but we, have, we, we are in a uh, transition phase and we have to take into account better diagnostics. But in outbreak clusters, no, we, we can show that we have no recurring of Legionella infections when we fulfill these rules. I can show it at this example. This is a hospital where I was integrated in the um, outbreak management. They had uh, half a year after the uh, opening of this hospital, um, four, uh, 11 lesionalosis and four death. And we could show that they have a lot of uh, mistakes in their plumbing systems. And until today, they have an obligation, uh, obligation to uh, diagnose every pneumonia which is occurring therein. And since the sanitation of this system in 1991, there are no new Legionella. It means we can show in outbreaks that by implementing these rules, which I mentioned, we can show also in other uh, uh, buildings that these uh, were um, successful. But we must have a shared risk responsibility. Risk regulation can only guarantee low concentration in the central parts of um, a plumbing system, but the uh, <coughs> consumer must guarantee that they flush their showers or water taps after periods of stagnation. This cannot be uh, regulated and therefore it is a challenge for risk communication also for the consumers. What are the open questions? Uh, we see that we have also in, in some areas in cold drinking water installation uh, contaminations and um, um, we must have a good flushing procedure and um, should environmental monitoring be supplemented by temperature profiles? I think yes because temperature for Legionella is very, very important. And Legionella species, um, we have now a discussion in, in Germany, perhaps in Europe, what should we monitor, Legionella species or better Legionella pneumophila? When you look to the uh, clinical diagnosis, they are just looking for Legionella pneumophila and with the urinary antigen, they are looking just for Legionella pneumophila CIR group 1. And uh, we are looking for the moment for all Legionella species. And therefore, for the moment, I'm convinced that we should concentrate on Legionella pneumophila because our rules implemented in the um, beginning of the, uh, in, in the 19s uh, were based on Legionella pneumophila. So my presentation. I hope I could answer a little bit your questions. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martin. And, and I realize, I apologize, I didn't introduce you. Uh, the committee has your, your bio in our books, but uh, I would like to uh, just take a moment and introduce Martin to the rest of the online uh, participants and others in the room. Um, uh, because you do have uh, so much um, experience. Um, so uh, Martin is a professor of hygiene and public health and uh, manages the Institute for Hygiene and Public Health at the University of Bonn. And um, he's been involved with uh, Drinking Water uh, Commission in, in Germany. He's, he's uh, uh, chairs the, the commission there. Um, and he's also been involved with the German Society of Hospital Hygiene. I think you're the current president there. 
and a past president of the Society of Hygiene and Environment and Preventive Medicine. So he has a lot of experience uh, with environmental issues and especially hospital and, and hospital acquired um, diseases and that's connected to the drinking water. And he's now in a working group looking at plumbing systems um, uh, with the German Technical and Scientific Association. So we're really pleased to have so many of your caliber here helping us understand what's going on uh, in Europe. Um, so Martin, I'm going to open it up for some uh, questions from the committee. And um, we'll just carry on with the discussion for um, you know 10 to, to 15 more minutes. OK, Jack Koss. Yeah, um, one of your slides, you had a figure of a survey of 70% of uh, buildings being positive for Legionella. Was that a, a representative or a systematic a survey? It was a survey which we made um, with um, some institutes and it, these are also the um, uh, data which we um, hold it in, in our institute and it's published in uh, some um, um, German publications. It's not internationally in, uh, published in English. But um, it was important to uh, convince that uh, by such rules uh, we can um, lower the concentrations. I think that would be interesting to get a copy of, even if it's in German. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah Martin, you can uh, send anything, a link, or you can send the paper directly to Laura or to me, or to yeah. both of us, or to Remy. And uh, we're happy to take it from there for the rest of the committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would appreciate that. That's the survey that you did in 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. Very and good. We, we have now a lot of, of data because uh, now in Germany it's regulated and there is a must to um, monitor these, uh, these buildings. And therefore, uh, we have a lot of experience from a lot of other institutes and laboratories. And, and Martin, those, those monitoring data, they're compiled or um, it's compiled by special um, uh, studies. Um, <laughs> where does the monitoring data go? Uh, and, you know, when it's uh, in compliance, in other words, when there's not a problem, where does the monitoring data go? Does it just go in a report for, with the uh, institution or do, is it compiled at the national level? It is um, um, for the, uh, the for, uh, former data were from, from institutes, but we have now a national study which called LETRIVA, which is um, done by the Federal Ministry of Health and supported by the Federal Ministry of Health together with our National uh, Robert Koch Institute and the uh, Federal Institute of Environmental Protection Agency where these data are compiled. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was talking about where the 70 to versus 10 so there's a, there's a publication we could go to, Martin, that shows yeah, the... I will, I will try to, to, to send it to you, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. You said today, the 10%, so that must be the national survey, right? Yeah. And then, uh, okay, very good. Uh, Amy Prude. So it's a very impressive, comprehensive monitoring and uh, mitigation plan. So I'm curious about the risk communication side of that both in terms of the folks that have to implement these plans, but also the general public. Um, especially it's interesting that you communicate with households about things like water stagnation. So I'd like to know about risk communication. And I'd also like to know a little bit more about what you were recommending in households and um, how that's been implemented and if there's any benefit. Mm -hmm. um, every uh, public health departments which have the regional um, uh, communication uh, task for their uh, people uh, in every community have an information site on their homepage where you can click on uh, Legionella. And in this um, um, uh, information site you can 
uh, also find uh, these informations and our in, um, environmental protection agency has also given out uh, information but um, I think that now by the obligation to monitor then uh, there is a better sensibilization also for consumers to aware these informations long time they were not interested but now they they see there is something and if a, a responsible person of a plumbing system of a private big building he uh, when they have an exceeding of the technical value he must inform uh, people who are living in these houses and then they have questions and they they ask also public health departments, what can I do? And therefore, uh, there is uh, also the um, communication which is, uh, which is um, activated. It's the same when a, a woman is pregnant. A long time, she's not interested in informations on, on little Charles, but then if, if she comes in such a situation, she is, uh, she has more sensibilization. It's the same effect which we see also for uh, in these communications. Is there any special communication to susceptible or immunocompromised groups? And also, is there any <coughs> pushback from an enforcement standpoint? It's one thing to say you have to do this. Is there vocal pushback or is it more quiet dissonance or just a high level of compliance? Yeah, we, we made from uh, the Robert Koch Institute, we have there a um, hospital hygiene um, a committee, I'm a member also of this, and uh, we have an own guideline for immunosuppressed people. And therein, there are the risk factors and the risk management, what they can do. And uh, we have also therein also an information what they can do in their households hand disinfection and things like that. And uh, there is also a chapter on water and water associated risks that they can use, for example, in these situations when they have a long time um, um, immunosuppressive of more than 10 days uh, that uh, and are lower granulocytes of uh, one thousand per um, um, milliliter. Then they um, they should do more. Per, for example, like um, filtration of their tap water and shower heads. And this is also uh, written in this guideline. And we try. We have also published uh, these. Um, uh, this information in a very simple way that people can understand, especially those who are at very high risk uh, for also for Legionella infections. Nick, Ashwell. Yes. Hi, Martin. Uh, interested in following up on your German statistics of the prevalence of uh, Legionella. So. My question really relates to what are the sequence of events that leads to the identification of uh, Legionella in your statistics? In other words, do you first look at urinary antibody and then follow up with a culture and then follow up with an identification of that culture? Or is there a, a direct, say, um, molecular approach to look at clinical samples to make that uh, identification? Mm -hmm. um, we have in Germany an obligation to notify uh, legionellosis. Most, as in every country, most of the diagnoses are done by urinary antigen in urine. It's a little bit of pity because we see that by PCR of sputum and uh, bronchial lavage, uh, you have a better um, uh, outcome of the diagnosis. And therefore, this uh, must be notified to the public health, local public health department. This has to notify it to the uh, federal states and the federal states have to notify the Robert Koch Institute where these st statistics are 
collected and they uh, um, have to notify it also to the ECDC, the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control in Stockholm. When we have um, um, an increase of uh, pneumonia and legionellosis, then we try uh, to go to the homes and to the um, 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 occupational areas of the persons who are infected uh, and to look uh, if we can find in the plumbing systems uh, or in, in other areas um, the, um, the same um, Legionella, which we are looking by um, cultural methods, because cultural methods have the advantage that we can compare the clinical and the, um, the environmental sample. Um, we try also to use in outbreaks PCR to have a quicker information if there are, um, if there are um, reservoirs in one or two of the cooling towers, as it's mentioned also by a lot of outbreak cases. And, um, but for the moment, uh, the golden rule for env environmental monitoring is the culture. You can use also um, a PCR, but we have no um, consentant technical value or action values. And it is for the moment an add to the culture methods uh, in environmental monitoring. Answer to this, the, the question, uh, uh, Nick. <laughs> yes, I have one follow-up for clarity, for at least on my side. Um, I'm interested in when you've gone directly by PCR on clinical, say, lavage or sputum samples, and compared that to culture, what the relative difference was both in prevalence and in diversity of Legionella. Oh, uh, I can I, I have to look for it. I can't answer this question um, uh, directly uh, for the moment. I have to look to clarify it. But you may have that data available, perhaps? Yeah, I, 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 I have to look. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Steve, for example, oh, no, you. Just, my comment is more, it would be great to get those guidelines for what they send to patients. Uh, so oh, the patient guidelines. Patient so we can get a copy of the patient the guidelines. Like. Yeah, uh, Martin, if, if you send us a link or the PDF directly, then we'll we'll get it to the committee. So yeah, the patient the guidelines. Patient, they're very the interesting. Is that only in yeah. Germany? In German? It's uh, the patient it's guidelines. It's, uh, uh, it's a pity. It's only published in German. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, rules for pneumonia diagnostic, which is very important. Long time they were not looking, they were not obliged to look also for no. uh, Legionella when they have severe pneumonia. Now, yeah. it's recommended that in severe pneumonia, you must or you should look also for Legionella uh -huh. because in the Warstein outbreak, it was uh, the biggest outbreak with 159 cases, long time, uh, in the beginning of the outbreak, they didn't look for any, uh, they didn't do any Legionella <laughs> diagnostics. And this, uh -huh. uh, this, it was overseen. And therefore, it's so important. If you have an increase in pneumonia in your hospital, you should take into account that there could be also a Legionella outbreak. And if you have a severe pneumonia, um, uh, you should also look in, in your intensive care unit or in your hospital, you should look for, uh, also for Legionella. And it's, uh, it's paid by state, this diagnostic. Okay. So there's some, there's some heterogeneity in how the states would do things. Okay, we have a question from Michelle Provo. She's online. Michelle, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was an excellent overview of the regulations and what works and does now is more difficult. And I really appreciated that you put answers to the questions that the committee it was very useful. Now, um, I'm going to go back to the Le Triwa study because I think the committee would benefit from information from that study. 
especially I know the, the, the group working on this study is just about to present in Lyon, I believe. Would there be any, um, any preliminary results from that study, Dr. Exner, that could be shared with the committee? Because uh, it really uh, would shed a lot of light on many of our questions <coughs> regarding the efficacy of regulation and the cost return of regulations as well. Yeah, uh, the um, Litriva pr project is under the, um, 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 it's um, led by the Robert Koch Institute and they had published uh, also some preliminary results, excuse me, it's a little bit difficult. I must ask uh, them that they could send to me the uh, uh, the uh, publications, and then I will send it to to you. It's okay if it's in German. We have a, a, a few German students. Uh, Wonderful. Work on that. Yeah, we could work on that. <laughs> it makes sense, and I'm sure with the the academy's capacity, we can figure it out. Uh, but um, one of the questions that I think. Uh, Nick asked, no, ask or somebody else is uh, the positivity was 70% before the, um, the regulation and it's gone down to 10% now. Uh, this uh, Latriva study will cover the impact of regulation on positivity extensively, will it? Yeah, it will. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, it I is, uh, will, yeah, we have a good. combination between the clinical case and what they find in the environment, and they try to, to bring it together. I don't know if it will be successful, because it's a very difficult thing. But uh, on the other side, if you look for um, outbreaks, um, with these recommendations, you can be very successful, uh, sex successfully control on a sustainable way outbreak that they, we can mention now, for example, in Wolstein, since 2013, we have no, no Legionella infection with this same sequence time. I have a, one last question. Um, with uh, Germany's quite unique in having the study that led to the estimation of community acquired pneumonia, uh, the numbers are much higher than the reported case. You made that point in one of your first slides. Um, what do you think are the, the approaches or regulations that would be most efficient in, in diminishing these numbers? And do you think that some of the regulations we, you have now in Germany are already contributing to lowering those numbers? We can, uh, I, I think we can say, uh, we have done a good. Uh, we have done the best what we can to regulate this. Especially, uh, we have a notification also now for cooling towers. And uh, if you have outbreaks with cooling towers, like in in uh, in Vastai, and I was engaged in the management with my co-workers, and we have to look every every cooling tower. No one knew who is a cooling tower, and to look then. It is very, very, you, you use much of time and you, it's a waste of time. And now we, we can push on the knob and we know where our cooling towers, where we have to look and we have also information of it. And, and therefore I think um, we, um, perhaps in some years we can see that we have no big increase because on the other side, our population is going older and older, and there is also the risks will increase in these uh, for the population. And it is also the same for um, for uh, sporadic legionellosis, for example, by plumbing systems. Thank you, uh, Ruth Brooklyn. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you very much, Martin. That was, that was terrific um, insight. I have, I, I want to clarify, do you believe that some of the increase in Legionnaires disease cases in recent years 
is due to improved awareness and increased clinical testing of pneumonia cases. Can you repeat? I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't yeah, I'll, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat microphone. it because I'm close to the microphone. Um, yeah, Thank you. The increase, the recent increase in clinical cases, is that due to um, more testing and better testing of pneumonia cases for Legionella? More testing. Yeah. More testing. It's, it's, Do you believe that that's the reason for the increase? Part of the reason. Part of the reason. It, there, there are some, some uh, factors which in, influence this. A better diagnostic, a better awareness of Legionella infections from the clinical colleagues. And um, then on the other side, we have, as I mentioned, an increase in um, um, vulnerable population. Uh, more, uh, more older population will have uh, more um, risk factors or uh, have more um, uh, risks to to, uh, to to have um, um, legionella infections. And there, I can't say that there is one risk factor, but uh, all these factors have influence. And one other question is. What about education of engineers, education, you know, formal education and training in terms of the engineers and the building owners? Is anything going on there? Yeah, we see now that, uh, for example, I can give you an example. I had a problem with my uh, eating in my house, and then a young um, a technique uh, uh, man was coming. He was perhaps 25 years, and he told me something for Legionella in a very detailed way, and, and I was very proud to listen to him, uh, that it is now implemented in the awareness of also young technical installation specialists. And this is a, a part of the uh, success of a good formation in this area. Yeah. Just as a clarification on that, um, is, is there a, do you, does, does the sort of German government provide generalized education? You said that everyone has to be trained, but is there a specific training program that's given to people that work on water systems specifically? Or is this sort of passed down information? Or is there a, a, a defined program that Germany has put together? Mm -hmm. We have it not regulated in acts and also not in uh, ordinance, but, but in technical rules. In the technical rule uh, for engineers, it is uh, proposed that they must be trained in it. And therefore, they um, must, for reasons on qualification, they must send responsible persons to be trained in it. It is um, because if you have no trained um, people for installations, then it could be um, that uh, they are pursued. So, Martin, I have a question from the um, uh, health department, an individual on the, who's online from a uh, health department. They want to know if you had to ramp up your regulatory field staff to ensure compliance with the regs, how did that in affect your the uh, this well not you yourself but the the uh, state or national program? And how do staff do the field inspections for compliance? Um, do they do they visit or is it self re self reporting? Our um, colleagues from the public health de departments are also trained. They must be trained because in case of notification, they must be, uh, have a field inspection. And um, also if there are now an, um, um, higher concentrations uh, uh, by the, uh, than the technical action value, or, um, then they must be informed. And therefore there, there is also motivation for the public health uh, departments to look for it. 
as I was in Baltimore to, to the conference, which was organized by Joe Cotrugo, there were colleagues also from, from public health departments and they asked, what can we do? And in, uh, I can just say in Germany, we have uh, a regulation by, uh, which is um, transposed uh, by the public health department uh, um, people. Uh -huh. So, so the last last thing I had was on one of your slides. You said the regulations have impacted the the, the prevalence. That is how often you find it. Um, do you, and but you said they until now that there's no reduction in notified cases. So. But there has been a reduction in outbreaks, and especially recurring outbreaks, if I understand. Did I, did I get that correctly in terms of your presentation? So a, yeah. a decrease in prevalence but a not, decrease uh, of, in of occurrence, but not yeah. a decrease in notified cases, but yeah. uh, a decrease in recurring outbreaks in the same facility. That's right. If, if we have, okay. uh, it's, it's my uh, own experience because I was integrated in some of outbreaks which I could personally look for over a long time and I could say that in these outbreaks uh, uh, with these regulations and the fulfillment of the technical rules you have a high security <coughs> that you will, will have a sustainable effect. I read um, an article now which is in preparation for um, um, and they looked for uh, the reoccurrence of legionello, legionellosis in uh, travel associated um, uh, infections in hotels and in up to 55% in Europe countries you have a reoccurrence of a new infections and our aim is that if we have an infection and we can say that uh, this is associated with a building or with a cooling tower we must bring it uh, in such a way under control that no further infection is associated with it this is for me a very important um, ascertainment that rules are effective. That's very, very good. Um, we're, um, we've reached the noon hour. Real, real quick. A real quick one. What is it? On the wastewater treatment plant case, what would you say was the primary remediating action after that point? Um, Martin, on the, on the wastewater case that you presented, what was the primary remediation um, approach? Yeah, we, um, we covered the aeration pond. We said that we should not have an open ventilation. And we know now that some industries um, <coughs> with some... Um, um, risk factors like uh, breweries, paper mills, where you have a high uh, content of uh, yeast and, and they have high temperatures, then, and, and they must aerate the, uh, the sewage. And then you have uh, factors which in, can increase your, your system. And it was covering the aeration pond uh, the ventilation system must be in the wastewater, not above the wastewater, to bring um, uh, um, um, ozone therein. And um, then um, we had good experience with UV treatment of clean sewage water before it was let into the rivers. Okay, very good. All right. Well, I think that um, we, we come to the end. We really appreciate uh, this comprehensive presentation and um, appreciate you joining us, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.